Samsung and Xiaomi both released their flagship range of devices in February. Top of the range are the 14 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. But which one has the best camera system? In this video, I'm going to compare all the cameras, the specs, how well they take photos, how well they capture video, as well as looking into how well they implement the computational stuff. Both companies have been working on their AI game, and so the two devices come with a number of AI features. So we're going to look at those as well. But it's actually not just the cameras that help us take great photos and videos, because things like the screen and the chipset also play an important part as well. The Samsung S24 Ultra comes with a display which is 1440 by 3120 pixels, which is a 19.5 to 9 ratio and a 505 pixel per inch density. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra comes with a slightly higher resolution display, which is 1440 by 3200 pixels. And so this comes out as a 20 by 9 ratio screen with a pixels per inch density of 522. The standout difference between the two screens is the S24 Ultra's implementation of the anti-reflective glass. And this just means that it makes it easier to read text and to watch videos on the Samsung in bright daylight. And actually when we're using the cameras, being able to better monitor what you're capturing means this feature is actually important for photography as well. In bright daylight, setting exposure and framing is easier when you're using the S24 Ultra than the 14 Ultra. So even though the 14 Ultra has a slightly higher resolution, the Samsung display is actually the clear winner here. Both devices are powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, but there is a slight difference. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra comes with the AB version compared to the S24 Ultra's AC version. There's no major difference, but basically the Samsung version is tweaked a little bit to better handle the AI processing. Both devices come with four rear cameras, as well as a good quality selfie camera. All four of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's rear cameras are 50 megapixel, and the selfie camera is a promising 32 megapixel. The Samsung Galaxy 24 Ultra comes with a 200 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel 3x 67mm equivalent telephoto camera, as well as a 12 megapixel selfie camera. So, on the one hand, you have the consistency of the Xiaomi 50 megapixel rear cameras going against the extra megapixels that you get on the Samsung main camera. Now, new to the S24 Ultra compared to the previous version is the 50 megapixel 5x periscope telephoto, and that replaces the 10x telephoto on the S23 Ultra. One big difference between the main camera is that the 14 Ultra features a stepless variable aperture, which goes from f1.63 to f4.0, whereas the S24 Ultra has a regular fixed aperture of f1.7. For photos, the Xiaomi has two color profile options. There's Leica Authentic and Leica Vibrant. And the Vibrant carries more saturation and more contrast, which I'd say is closer to the look of the Samsung regular mode photos. The Samsung S24 Ultra's main camera is a 200 megapixel, 24 millimeter equivalent, with a 1 over 1.3 inch size sensor. And those 200 million pixels are 0.6 micrometers in size. On the other hand, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's 50 megapixel main camera uses Sony's new flagship LYT900 one inch image sensor, which was announced at the end of last year. It is slightly wider, 23 millimeters equivalent, but it does have much larger 1.6 micrometer pixels. And of course, bigger pixels should mean a better low light performance. 
although the Samsung does use 16 into one pixel binning to compensate. And both sensors have optical image stabilization as well as phase detection autofocus. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the variable aperture on the Xiaomi, but do we really need a variable aperture on a phone or is it really just a gimmick? So there's no doubt that Xiaomi has put a lot of effort into engineering this. In regular photo mode, you can choose between four set apertures, but in pro mode, the aperture control becomes stepless. And that means that you can set an exact aperture size. A wide aperture is going to be useful for allowing more light onto the sensor in low light conditions, as well as for creating a shallower depth of field. In other words, you're going to get more background bokeh. A narrow aperture is useful for reducing the light hitting the sensor, as well as creating a deep depth of field. And that just means that you get less bokeh and more of the background is going to be in focus. So both devices have a wide aperture, although the Xiaomi's is slightly wider at f1.63 to the S24 Ultra's f1.7. So are we ever going to really need a variable aperture on a smartphone? When might we actually use it? Firstly, if we want to reduce the background blur and we want more to be in focus. Secondly, if we want to reduce our shutter speed, because normally we'd have to use an ND filter to reduce the light and therefore be able to slow the shutter. Now, this is particularly useful when we're shooting video and you want motion to look smoother. So I had a little test and here's two videos that I took, one with the widest aperture and one with the narrowest. And you can see that I am indeed getting a little bit more motion blur in the video with the narrowest aperture, but also the background is less blurry. For photos, it might not be so important to slow shutter speed because normally we want crisp images. We don't want them to be blurred by motion. But there might be times when you want more to be in focus. So here's two photos I took and you can definitely see there's a difference between the wide and the narrow aperture on the 14 Ultra. These are creative choices that the Xiaomi now allows you to have control over. Or you can just leave the aperture to set automatically, in which case you're not going to have control over it. So is the variable aperture a useful feature? Well, I would actually say yes, if you like taking your time with your videos and your photos, adjusting settings. With the 14 Ultra, you now have the full exposure triangle to play with, which is ISO, shutter speed and aperture. But with the S24 Ultra and most other smartphones, you don't. But if you prefer using your camera in auto most of the time, then I don't actually think the variable aperture is going to be that much use to you. Even though the aperture does adjust automatically, I think you really need to be adjusting it manually to get a benefit from it. Both devices have two telephoto cameras. There's a 3x tele for the Samsung and a 3.2x for the Xiaomi. And they both have a 5x periscope telephoto. So first of all, let's compare the 3x and the 3.2x teles. The S24 Ultra 3x telephoto is a 67mm equivalent with a 10 megapixel sensor and an f2.4 aperture. And the 14 Ultra 3.2x telephoto is a 75mm equivalent with a 50 megapixel sensor and a larger f1.8 aperture. In theory then, we should get a shallower depth of field with the Xiaomi 3.2x and the camera should get us closer to the subject without using digital zoom. And that actually turns out to be true because from these photos taken at the same distance, we can see there's more background bokeh from the 14 Ultra. Both 5x telephoto cameras are periscope designs, which use a 50 megapixel sensor. The S24 Ultra telephoto is a 111 millimeter equivalent with an f3.4 aperture. Meanwhile, the 14 Ultra is a 120 millimeter equivalent with a bigger f2.5 aperture. So again, we should expect more background blur from the Xiaomi and better low light performance. And if we put them side by side, we can see that the Xiaomi's background is indeed more naturally blurry. So I do actually like having the shallower depth of field that we get from the Xiaomi here. So I filmed myself using the two 
telephotos of each device to see how much natural background blur we get and to see which produces the best colors. And I'm just using autofocus and auto exposure for this test. Using the three times tellies, the Xiaomi produces noticeably more blur in the background. As well, I think I do prefer the skin tones of the Xiaomi, which might be down to the Samsung overexposing the image slightly. Using the five times telephoto, the results were pretty similar. The Xiaomi wins for skin tone and for nice exposure. For blurry background, the difference isn't as noticeable as it is with the three times tellies. But on the other hand, I do think the Xiaomi loses points for the auto exposure being a little bit too sensitive. Because as you can see, when the subject is moving in the frame, the Xiaomi adds these little adjustments to the exposure that are a bit sort of sudden and they don't look too good. So it seems like it's getting a bit confused by movement of the subject and I don't think this looks good. So I did try switching the exposure metering to average instead of using the face, but that didn't actually make any difference. As you can see in this clip, as I turn left and right, the exposure kind of goes up and down. So it is going to be more important to lock exposure using the Xiaomi if you can, and that's going to prevent these kind of messy exposure value changes. Once we reach the limit of the optical zoom provided by the telephoto lenses to get closer to a subject, we need to start using digital zoom. The problem is this often results in a major loss of quality. And of course, the further you zoom in, the worse it gets. In photo mode, the Samsung S24 Ultra zooms up to 100 times, while the Xiaomi 14 Ultra can zoom up to 120 times. The Samsung has a 200 megapixel main sensor, which means you can take a 200 megapixel photo and then you can zoom in or crop in using the crop tool in the gallery. But aside from that, both systems employ AI to enhance these grainy, messy photos that we get at high magnifications. With the Samsung, take a long range photo, open it in the gallery, and you're gonna see these spinning circles which indicate the processing that's going on. With the Xiaomi, zoom in over 30 times, and you're gonna see this red AI enhancement button in the bottom left corner. Again, once you take the photo, the camera system gets to work trying to enhance and basically just bring some clarity to the image. Now, these AI systems involve a level of invention. Using what's known as generative AI, the system uses the available image information and then tries to fill in the gaps. Both systems are pretty hit and miss. Sometimes it comes out okay and sometimes it doesn't. We're just using the default settings in the regular photo mode across all the rear cameras. The Samsung photos do look a little bit sharper. There's a little bit more detail in the shadows as well. The Xiaomi photos come out a little warmer. Even the five times telephoto comes out sharper from the Samsung, despite them both having 50 megapixel sensors. If we zoom in on these flowers, for example, we can see that there's more definition in the Samsung photo. So I tested all the rear cameras in regular video mode, and this time I actually preferred the image quality of the Xiaomi. Overall, the main camera and the telephotos deliver a shallower depth of field and I'd say slightly richer colors. And I'd say that these more saturated colors probably is down to the Xiaomi using a darker auto exposure. But on the red flowers, for example, the Samsung seems to retain more detail than the Xiaomi. So there's not too much in it, I think, it's going to come down to personal taste in the end, in terms of which one of these you prefer the look of. Uh, one thing to note is that recording video in the regular mode, Samsung allows you to switch between all the cameras while recording, but the Xiaomi doesn't allow you to switch between front and rear when you're recording. So you would need to stop and then start recording again. But you can at least switch between all four rear cameras when you're recording video. Now, using digital zoom in video mode, the Xiaomi can zoom up to 15 times, while the Samsung can zoom up to 20 times. And I'd say that the video quality comes out pretty good in both devices, even at maximum zoom.
Both devices can shoot 8K video and both support 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second at 8K resolution. The difference is that the Xiaomi is a little bit more flexible when it comes to mode and camera choices. The 14 Ultra allows you to shoot 8K 24 frames per second in the regular video mode, whereas with the S24 Ultra, you're going to need to switch to the Pro video mode. As well, the Xiaomi allows you to shoot 8K video with all four rear cameras, while the Samsung is limited to the main and the five times tele cameras. And that's down to the fact that the four Xiaomi rear cameras are all 50 megapixel. Both the Samsung S24 Ultra and the Xiaomi 14 Ultra can shoot 4K video at 120 frames per second. If you switch down to 1080p, the Xiaomi can record up to 1920 frames per second. Uh, presumably, it's not actually recording that many frames per second at that setting, but using some kind of interpolation to add extra frames. When you switch down to 1080p, the Samsung can record up to 240 frames per second. But in fact, if you record 4K 120 frames per second video with the Samsung and then go into the gallery, you can slow it down to a speed of 1 16th, which would be the equivalent of 480 frames per second. So that means you can get 480 frames per second 4K video, you know, equivalent slow motion. Uh, it does seem that you have to record in the pro video mode to get this 1 16th option when you're editing. Now, another difference is that while the Xiaomi limits 120 frames per second to the main camera, the Samsung supports 120 frames per second video on both the main and the ultra-wide cameras. So they're both Android devices but the camera interfaces are quite different. Samsung's camera UI has evolved over the years with various new features being added on. On the other hand, Xiaomi's camera interface started off a little bit iPhone inspired and it's kind of evolved in its own way from there. The problem with the S24 Ultra camera UI is that new features are kind of layered on top of old features. As well, not everything is contained within one app. There's the old Camera Assistant app, which is kind of bolted onto the regular camera settings. There's raw photo support in Pro mode, but then there's the Expert Raw app, which needs to be downloaded to shoot Samsung's Expert Raw. And this app has its own layout, which is a little bit different to the regular Samsung camera app. By contrast, the Xiaomi camera app, it just feels better throughout and more intuitive. It feels less like extra things have been bolted on here and there. You know, it's just more uh, consistent throughout. The Xiaomi Pro camera mode has a simple button to switch between video and photo, whereas the Samsung has these separate modes, one for video and then one for photo. In the S24 Ultra, you're going to have to head to more and there you're going to find both Pro mode for photo and video. So of course you can long press and then drag them into the menu if you think you're going to use them regularly. The layout of the Xiaomi Pro mode is better in my opinion. For example, in the Xiaomi Pro mode, you can quickly switch to RAW or to Ultra RAW. And as we just saw, the Samsung requires an extra app with a different interface for its expert RAW. As well, the Samsung Pro video mode is limited to the main and the five times tele rear cameras. And you can also use the selfie camera with the Samsung Pro video mode as well. Whereas the Xiaomi can use all four rear cameras in both Pro video and Pro photo mode, but it doesn't actually allow you to access the selfie for some reason. The Xiaomi Pro mode essentially feels more Pro than the Samsung Pro mode. The Xiaomi also has a more section with extra features, but this time you can't drag them into the main menu. The Xiaomi Pro photo mode also has these presets so you can either use one of their presets or you can actually save uh, like a combination of uh, exposure settings and white balance settings and then if you want to recover them you can just press this button you don't have to go through your camera setting everything separately so that's just like a nice little touch nice little time saver 
If you have certain settings that you always use in a certain situation, then it's great to have them saved so that you can just recall them very quickly. So both devices can shoot RAW photos, but as we've seen, the Xiaomi makes it a little bit easier to do so. As well, the Xiaomi supports a native log video setting, whereas the Samsung doesn't. The Xiaomi goes even further and provides a Rec. 709 preview LUT, as well as the ability to import third-party preview LUTs. So both devices can zoom a long way past the optical limits using digital zoom. And as we know, normally this results in ugly artifact-ridden images, which are pretty much unusable. But both systems also use AI to sharpen and to fill in the missing image information. So I tested both, so anything over 30 times, and the Xiaomi gives you the option to use generative AI to enhance the image. The Samsung also uses AI, but it doesn't have a sort of convenient button for switching it off. So in the three tests here, I generally found it easier to frame a distant subject and to get focus using the Xiaomi. With the Xiaomi, I only needed one try to get it right. Whereas with the Samsung, I kind of needed two or three goes at it before I got the framing and also the autofocus wasn't as reliable. But then the devices got to work enhancing the image and again I do think that the Xiaomi did a better job with two of the three images. With the image of the flowers and with this kind of head in the shadows it's a bit less clear which one looks best. I think the Xiaomi exposes the shadows whereas the Samsung exposes for the highlights. But overall, I'd say that the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is a winner in this particular extreme zoom test. The AI features don't stop there, particularly for the Samsung. The S24 Ultra has a number of extra features for editing photos. We've got enhancement, we've got object erasing and moving, we've got reflection removal, as well as turning photos into a time lapse. There's also a Samsung AI feature which allows you to add slow motion to a video even if it was shot at a regular frame rate. Now for me the time lapse isn't really a time lapse and it's probably the least impressive of all those features. And also the slow motion AI tends to add these kind of weird looking glitches. Like most smartphones now both devices have a portrait mode for photos that adds this fake blurry background to mimic a photographer's long lens and wide aperture. The Samsung just gives you a set of zoom buttons for the lenses, but the Xiaomi has the zoom levels displayed in millimeters to give you an idea of the equivalent lens. It's kind of the same as when you open the zoom wheel and you see the focal length equivalent. As well, there's an extra button which gives you extra focal length and bokeh style choices. Thing is that the Xiaomi lenses do actually a pretty good job of adding a blurry background without the fake effect. So you, you might not even need to use the portrait mode when you're using the 14 Ultra. Both the Samsung and the Xiaomi allow you to add a blurry background to regular photos in case you want to add the effect to a photo later on. The S24 Ultra and the 14 Ultra have a mode for adding blurry backgrounds to video. Samsung's is just called Portrait Video, which you can find in the More section. Xiaomi's is now called Movie Mode. Samsung Portrait Video is limited to 30 frames per second, up to 4K, and it can be used on the main camera as well as the selfie camera. Meanwhile, the Xiaomi's Movie Mode is limited to the main camera only, and as well, 24 frames per second only, and 1080p. Movie mode does allow you to choose this kind of anamorphic style, oval bokeh, as well as making an effort to mimic that motion blur that you get from a movie camera's 180 degree shutter. Personally, I find a blurry background for the selfie camera is pretty essential, so for me, the Samsung wins this one. 
So you do actually get an amount of natural shallow depth of field with the rear cameras on both these devices, especially the Xiaomi. And in fact, you're most likely to need this sort of fake blurry background on the selfie camera, which the Xiaomi does not have. And talking of selfie cameras, both shoot pretty nice looking 4K video. The letdown for the 14 Ultra is that the exposure can be a little bit glitchy, especially when there's light behind you. Plus, as we found out, there's no portrait mode for video on the Xiaomi selfie cam. But at least you can now shoot up to 60 frames per second in 4K resolution on both of these selfie cameras. Both devices have very good stabilization. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra has two modes, Steady Video and Steady Video Pro. Meanwhile, Samsung has a single mode called Super Steady. But whereas the Xiaomi Steady Video mode is limited to 1080p, the Samsung shoots 2K Super Steady. The Samsung can also shoot using the main or the ultra wide, while the Xiaomi is limited to just the main wide. And one thing the Xiaomi has that the Samsung doesn't is the photographer's kit. It's an extra purchase, but it's there if that's the kind of thing you're into. And it comes with two main parts, the case and the grip. And after you've got the phone into the case, you could just slide on the grip and then flick the lock switch so it's locked securely in place. The case allows you to mount filters using the 67 mm filter adapter ring. And that means that you can use all kinds of regular camera filters because 67 millimeter is a standard size for ND filters, mist filters, polarizing filters, and all that kind of stuff. The grip has a shutter button and a record button, as well as a zoom lever and a control wheel. There's also a power bank within the grip. So when you mount the grip, it's gonna start charging your phone. And this does give you some handy extra battery life. All the buttons and the wheel can be customized. So at the moment, I have the wheel set to the default EV, so I can easily adjust exposure. The shutter button can be switched between single and burst photos, for example. And the zoom level can be used to switch between cameras instead of zooming. So the Samsung doesn't have anything made by Samsung that's uh, as photographer friendly as the Xiaomi kit. But well, there is one little trick, and that's that you can use the pen to remotely control the camera a little bit. So the pen of the Samsung S24 Ultra has a little button in the middle. So if you put the phone on a tripod, for example, and you take out the pen, and then you can just press the button to take a photo or start and stop recording. And in photo mode, if you hold down the button, it's gonna take a burst of photos. And in any mode, if you double tap the button, it's gonna switch between rear and front cameras. The Xiaomi actually has an audio setting which is specifically supposed to reduce the wind noise on the audio with the inbuilt mic. So I'm just testing that now. It's a little bit windy. So it should give it a little bit of a test. If you really wanna up your game with your smartphone photography, and videography, join us on Patreon because I got a bunch of lessons there. Um, courses, individual lessons, editing, shooting, everything's covered and you can chat to me, you can chat to the others, join the Discord. We're having a good time there. Oh, there's also actually the Mobile Motion Film Festival. So that's all included in the membership. So I really recommend that you join us and it also supports the channel and it allows me to keep making these videos. So what's the verdict on these two phones? I don't think there's a clear winner. I think it's more about which type of character you are and which type of character the phone is. Um, if you want a phone that you can just take out of your pocket, you don't have to mess about with it and you can take great pictures, great videos. Without having to fiddle around with the settings then, I'd say the Samsung is for you. Uh, the Xiaomi is really more of a sort of serious photographer's uh, smartphone camera, uh, if you like setting ISO shutter speed and now aperture, and the aperture does actually make a difference. Um, but if you're not really into all that sort of stuff, then it's probably not the device for you. Now the wind has picked up. Do you want to check out some horses? 
She can see the horse that she quit. But yeah, Xiaomi's for you if you're a serious photographer. <laughs> hey, let's switch. Another thing is that the uh, Samsung has this dual record mode. So we can go and say hi to the horses. Uh, he needs to look at my beautiful face. Hello. Hello. Oh, they've all come out to say hello. Fun. Ciao.